Hey, it's Brandon with Pence PC, bringing you the most up-to-date guide for hacking your Wii U console in 2023 with both custom firmwares, Tiramisu and Aroma. Tiramisu. 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 You will have the ability to choose which one you want loaded on the fly. This will allow you to install games to a hard drive or a flash drive, run any homebrew app like Nusply so you can download games direct to your Wii U, and others like Homebrew Launcher and USB Loader GX and more. It is an amazing console once modded and fortunately extremely easy, especially following this guide. Before we start, be sure to visit PinsPC.com to browse all of our guides and videos organized with the most up-to-date information to read through along with in-depth videos to follow and products to make the process even easier. Don't want to do the modding process yourself? Send your console to Pence PC to be modded and upgraded to its full potential, along with videos to show how to use your console. Pence PC brings you the most detailed guides to make your life easier. Links are in the video description. And now, onto the items you will need to complete this modification. There isn't much you need to modify your Wii U. You obviously need a Wii U console and gamepad. There are two distinct versions, an 8GB and a 32GB version. Both are modded the same exact way. Just recently, there has been some concerns with Wii U longevity due to some Wii U's internal memory going bad causing issues. There were three manufacturers that made Wii U NAND chips or internal memory chips, Hynix, Samsung, and Toshiba. The Hynix chips are the ones that are going bad. I have personally experienced this issue from a customer send in service. This message would pop up consistently, ruining the gaming experience and making it impossible to play anything. The only way to tell which NAND chip you have is to physically inspect it on the inside of your console or run a homebrew app called Wii U Ident, which shows the manufacturer of your NAND chip, which has been overwhelmingly Hynix for the bad ones. You can only run this homebrew app if you've modded your Wii U. Fortunately for us, Modern Voltar has created a remedy called NAND-Aid, which is a hardware-based product which aims to replace the bad NAND chips with an SD card soldered around the NAND. This is a work in progress, but hopefully this will allow a full replacement for faulty NANDs on Wii U systems. Pence PC will keep you updated on the progress of this device. You will also need an SD card to store the hacked files, which will stay on the SD card. I urge you to only buy brand name SD cards like Samsung, SanDisk, or Toshiba, etc. Pence PC offers a SanDisk Wii U SD card in various sizes formatted and ready with all of the files to follow along with this guide. I recommend at least a 64GB SD card, which is big enough to back up your NAND. This is a step in the modding process. The Wii U supports up to 1TB SD cards formatted to FAT32. You can use SD or micro SD in an SD adapter. The Wii U SD card, besides storing hacked files, will also store game files temporarily if you are downloading games through Nusply or backing up game disks to install to your hard drive. You will need a Wi-Fi connection during the modding process, along with a PC, for transferring files to your SD card. If your PC does not have an SD card slot, you will need a USB to SD card adapter to access the SD card on your PC. You will need a Wiimote to modify the virtual Wii side of the Wii U. Wiimotes are sold on PinsPC.com. The difference between the hacks or custom firmware, Aroma and Tiramisu, is Aroma is newer, allows for more features, and will be more supported in the future. The reason both are included in this video is because not every application has transferred over to Aroma, and so will only work with Tiramisu. But fortunately, you can switch between Aroma and Tiramisu with a simple Wii U reboot. And last, I want to give thanks to the hardworking coders out there that make all of this possible. From homebrew apps and custom firmware, a lot of this is possible from Mass Shell and the staff at Nintendo Homebrew. From Nintendo Homebrew's Wii U Hacks dot guide, which is a written guide to Mass Shell's work on Tiramisu and Aroma. None of this is possible without their hard work. Consider giving them a donation. Links in the video description. Pence PC understands people have issues following written guides or don't have the technical background to follow along, which is why we give in-depth video tutorials for those people out there that would rather see it done on video. 
We have no involvement in the actual coding of these homebrew or hacks. We simply provide a service for people that don't want to or can't do it themselves, along with providing tips and troubleshooting advice. So let's get on with the hacking process. Okay, the very first step that we wanna do is format our Wii U SD card. So no matter what size, this is the same process that we wanna do. So right now I've got a USB adapter with my SD card in it and I'm going to place it in my PC. So here we are on my desktop. As we can see here, here is my SD card. It's 128 gigabyte. So I'm gonna right click on it and go to properties. As you can see here, it's formatted as XFAT. That is not the format that we need for our Wii U. We need FAT32. So we're gonna use a program called GUI Format to format our SD card correctly. The link is in the video description. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and run GUI format. You may be able to format it in Windows, but a lot of times for some reason it doesn't give you that option. So I always use GUI format. It works every time, it's perfect. So we can see here GUI formatted automatically chose my SD card. That doesn't happen every time. You wanna make absolutely sure you're gonna format the correct drive. So here in Windows Explorer, I can see I have my C drive and I have my F drive, which is my SD card. So F is the one that I wanna format. Obviously, we can see here, F is selected. It says 128 G X fat. We know that's the one I want to select. Now, go ahead and just keep the allocation unit size, the default, whatever it chooses for that is usually perfectly fine. So I can go ahead and name the volume label, whatever I want. I usually just name it 128 gigabyte SD for whatever size it is and go ahead and have quick format checked. Now you wanna make sure you have all Windows Explorer windows closed. So like this is open right now, I need to make sure that it is closed before I format this or else it will error out. If it does error, once again, just make sure everything's closed and then go ahead and run GUI format again. But I've got everything closed so I can go ahead and hit start. This should only take a few seconds. As you can see here, it says right here, done. And I can go ahead and close GUI format out. Now going to File Explorer, I can right click on this, go to Properties, and as you can see here, FAT32 is now the file system. Exactly what we need. Go ahead and download the Pence PC Wii U SD card files. It will come in a zipped archive like this right here. Now to open zipped archives, actually Windows now has a built-in zipped archiver, so you can probably open this up perfectly fine, but I always use WinRAR, it's a software program that I've used for a decade, okay, WinRAR. But go ahead and open it like this, and then you will see a folder that says 2023 Pins PC Wii U files. Once again, these are not files that I created, okay? I just package this for people to make it easy for them to download and place on their SD card. So you're not going to different links and downloading different stuff. Once again, I did not create these, I just packaged them for you. So go ahead and go into this folder here, and all of these folders and applications you wanna go ahead and highlight. I am now going to highlight all of these, drag them and drop them to my SD card. As you can see here, dragging them to my SD card. It should transfer quite fast because it's not very big. Going into my SD card, you can see I have the folders and files that I need. Just a quick summary on the different folders on your Wii U SD card now. The apps folder, which is in the root of your SD card, root meaning the very first thing you see when you open your SD card, meaning this is what I see right here, this is the root of the SD card, okay? The apps folder in here are all of the apps for the original Wii or VWii, virtual Wii on the Wii U system. So anything that was used originally on the original Nintendo Wii is located on the apps folder. Now, the Wii U apps that are, that are used on the Wii U are located in Wii U and then apps, okay? So these are the Wii U apps or homebrew apps. So now your SD card is set up and ready to follow this guide. So let's go ahead and begin. All right, so let's go ahead and get on with the modding process. We're first going to mod the Wii U side, and then next we will mod the VWi or virtual Wii side. So let's go ahead and put your SD card into the front port of the Wii U. Once your SD card is in your system, go ahead and launch system settings. 
go ahead and make sure that you are connected to the internet. So go ahead and grab a Wi-Fi connection by going to internet and then connect to internet. If you're already connected, go ahead and just skip this part. Internet connection was successful. Once you are connected to the internet, you need to make sure you are on the latest firmware, which is 5.5.6. Right now, as you can see at the top right corner, I'm on 5.5.3. So I need to go ahead and update to the latest firmware. Simple process, all you have to do is go to the very far right by pressing the arrow here, or down here, you can just go ahead and press this little icon and it'll say update to the latest system version. So let's go ahead and do that. If in the future a different firmware comes out, which is very unlikely just because of how old the Wii U is, uh, the eShop doesn't work anymore, and they still have 5.5.6 as the official firmware. So I don't really see it being updated, but there is a chance that it could happen. If so, just make sure that this guide is still compatible with the latest firmware. If you are already on 5.5.6, once again, you can skip this part too. And as you can see here, right there, 5.5.6, we are currently on the latest firmware. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and launch Internet Browser, which is this icon right here. Go ahead and type this website address into the top bar. It is Wii U Exploit dot X Y Z. Wii U Exploit dot X Y Z. And then hit OK. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hit the run exploit and then you'll hold the B button. But I just wanna go over something real quick. If for some reason when you do this and you get a white screen or it freezes, go ahead and power down your system. Go ahead and go to the settings and scroll down to reset save data. Now once again, you only need to do the reset save data if it freezes whenever we do this step right here. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. You most likely won't run into that issue, but like again, if you do, just do the reset save data. So let's go ahead, hit the run exploit, and then hold the B button. I am holding the B button right now. Keep holding it and keep holding it. All right, you'll be greeted with this screen here. What we wanna do is use the D-pad to go down and select NAND Dumper. Press A once NAND Dumper is selected. So what we're gonna do here is back up our NAND to our SD card. What your NAND is, it's basically your internal memory. If for some reason you were to kill your console or brick your console, you can use this backup NAND to revive your console and bring it back from the death. So that's what we wanna do. Wanna make sure that every option says yes. So like this one right here says no, I wanna move over and select yes. Now you have to have at least 32 gigabytes free on your SD card to back up the full NAND. This model I believe that I have right here is an eight gigabyte, so I would just need at least eight gigabytes free on my system. If you have a 32 gigabyte NAND on yours, you'll need 32 gigabytes free on your SD card. If you don't have that much free on your SD card and you just wanna say screw it and continue without backing it up, you can go ahead and select no on this part so it won't back up the full man but once again i want to do it so i have everything selected as yes and once i have everything selected i'm going to go ahead and press the a button now it's very small you can barely see it in the top left corner here it's kind of blurry but it is currently backing up my NAND and it will take a while. 32 gigabytes is quite big, so please be patient and just let it do its thing. But I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward in the guide so you don't have to watch this whole process. All right, after your NAND is copied to your SD card, it should reboot your console. Once it does, go ahead and power down your console and put your SD card back into your PC. 
Okay, once your SD card is plugged into your PC, I created a folder on my desktop, or you can create a folder wherever you want on your computer and back up your NAND from the SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this folder here. And here's my SD card. All of these .bin files, select them and drag and drop to your computer. If you wanted to, you can keep these on your SD card. It's up to you. It does take up a lot of space, but you'll always know that it's on your SD card. Totally up to you. Okay, the transfer finished to my desktop. So I can go ahead and delete these files off of my SD card. Once again, you can keep them if you want, but they are quite large. Now that we have the NAND backed up, we can go ahead and continue on with the modding process. Take your SD card out of your computer and put it back in your Wii U. Okay, once again, we're gonna go ahead and launch Internet Browser and go to that same site that we used earlier, which is wiuexploit.xyz. And hit OK. Once again, we're gonna hit Run Exploit but instead of holding the B button, we're gonna hold the X button. So let's begin. I am holding the X button right now. You will now be booted into the environment loader. We're going to go ahead and use the D-pad and go down to installer and then press A once installer is highlighted. Welcome to the payloader installer. Go ahead and press the A button on check. Then press the A button on install slash update. Go down to install and press the A button. Once the payloader was successfully installed, press the A button to shut down the console. Find your health and safety information app. It is a yellow triangle with an exclamation point. Go ahead and launch it and hold the X button during this process. I am holding the X button right now, which boots me into the environment loader. Just like we did last time, go down to Installer and press A. Once again, press A on Check. This time, go down to Boot Options and press A. Press A on Switch to Payloader. The boot title successfully updated. You can press A to shut down the console. Power on your Wii U once again. When you power on your Wii U, it'll automatically boot to the environment loader. We now want Tiramisu, which is the hack that we want loaded every time we turn on the Wii U. To do that, use the D-pad to go down and then press the Y button on Tiramisu. It'll highlight Tiramisu in yellow. That means every time you boot your Wii U, Tiramisu will automatically load. If you ever want to change this, you can always hold the X button when you boot your Wii U up and it'll go into the environment loader so that you can change what you want to load automatically. Now that we have Tiramisu highlighted, go ahead and press the A button on Tiramisu to boot in. 
you may get a warning saying, the update folder currently exists and is not a file. Your system might not be blocking updates properly. Tiramisu automatically blocks updates, but it's not absolutely foolproof. I will show you how to get rid of the update folder later in this guide. Go ahead and press the B button to don't show this again. Now you will be loaded into the boot selector. Here we will choose what menu we want to load into after it boots Tiramisu. Normally you probably want to just boot into the Wii U menu, but for some reason if you automatically want to boot Homebrew Launcher as soon as you turn on your Wii U, you can set that one too, or the virtual Wii. I'm going to go ahead and boot into the Wii U menu. All I have to do is press the Y button to highlight the Wii U menu. Now I'm going to go ahead and boot into the Wii U menu. So press A on Wii U menu. If you ever want to get back into the boot selector, which was that menu where we chose Wii U menu or homebrew launcher or virtual Wii, where you can automatically boot, all you have to do is before you turn on your Wii U, hold the start button and keep holding it and it'll boot onto that menu. So right now, the Wii U side of this console is hacked and ready to go. To get into Homebrew Launcher, which is where all of your homebrew apps are located, you would just launch Me Maker app, which is right here. As you can see, we booted right into Homebrew Launcher. Now that we're here, we're going to go ahead and delete the update folder so that this Wii U will never ask you to update again or randomly decide to update without your consent. Now the likelihood that there is another Wii U update is pretty slim, but just in case, let's go ahead and launch this app right here. UF Dean. As you can see, the app says that the update folder does exist. All we have to do is press the A button to delete the update folder. The update folder is now deleted. You can press the home button to exit. To exit out of Homebrew Launcher and go into the Me Maker app, press the home button. And to get out of the Me Maker app, all you have to do is press close. So now the Wii U side is completely modded and ready for homebrew and to do whatever we want, install games, etc. Let's go ahead and get the Wii side the same way as the Wii U. So to get started modding the virtual Wii side, go ahead and launch Mii Maker, which will boot us into the homebrew launcher. Launch the compatinstaller.l file. Press the A button to install the homebrew channel to the Wii menu. Once succeeded, press the home button to exit. You need to have a Wiimote connected to your Wii U before you continue. So, using a Wiimote, press the sync button on the back of the controller, and on the front of your Wii U, press the red sync button. Once paired, it'll indicate on the screen, like so. Press the exit button. And once your controller is paired, launch VWE or the Wii icon. If it asks for a Nintendo ID, just hit later. I choose TV and gamepad. Press the plus button on the Wii remote. Once in the Wii menu, launch the homebrew channel.
Once in the Homebrew channel, launch D2X CIOS installer. Press the A button to go to this menu here. Using the D-pad on the Wiimote, scroll over to select the correct CIOS, which is D2X, V11, Beta 1, VWE. For the CIOS base, make sure it says 56. For the CIOS slot, make sure it says 249. Once you have the following, go ahead and press the A button to install. Once it finishes installing with success, press the A button to continue. Then, go ahead and keep the top CIOS the same as D2X V11 Beta 1 VWE. Change the 56 to a 57, and then change the 249 to 250. Once you have the following, press the A button to install. Once it finishes installing with success, press the A button. Now, once again, keep the top portion the same as D2X V11 Beta 1 VWE. Change the 57 to a 58, and change the bottom 250 to 251. Once you have the following, go ahead and press the A button to install. After it is complete, press the B button to exit. Once back in Homebrew Channel, go ahead and launch Patched iOS 80 Installer. Wait 30 seconds, and then you can continue. Once it says press any button to continue, press any button. During this process, do not turn off your Wii U or you could brick it. Once it says installation is complete, press any button to exit. And that is it for the virtual Wii side. Your Wii U is now completely modded. On the Wiimote, 
you can press the home button and then go to exit to system menu or you can shut down your system. Did you enjoy this guide? Visit PensPC.com slash guides to view other Wii U tutorials to take advantage of your newly hacked console. From playing Wii U games from a hard drive or flash drive, playing Wii or GameCube games in USB Loader GX, exploring homebrew apps, and more. We pride ourselves in giving you the most up-to-date content in video format to make your life easier. Thanks again.